chosen by Danny, that was Redemption Song from Bob Marley and the Wailers. We do like that, Danny. We do like that. And people like you, you know that. People, people are loving your enthusiasm and your passion. And that's great. It's nice to see someone so committed to where they live and the community that they're in and what they want to do uh, with their lives and helping other people rather than just helping themselves. Um, which is brilliant, it's refreshing. So, Danny, thank you um, for, we've gone up to the age of 20. I think, I think I was about 23 now. The age of 23. So, Danny, this is a mere 21 years ago. Yes. If my math serves me correctly. So okay. superb you are. At this time, on a Wednesday night. <laughs> so, <laughs> Danny, what happened tw uh, 21 years ago, 23-year-old Danny yes. Target, in Jaywick. Yes. With his mates. Yes. Young, handsome, and had the whole world in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what, um, what, what happened at the age of 23? I met a lovely lady um, called Michelle, and we had a beautiful daughter called Danielle. Nice. Danielle is my beautiful daughter. Um, we had 21 beautiful years together from a very young age. Me and her mother split up, right. but I was able to see Danielle for two or three nights a week. Yeah. Danielle lived with me for like most of, over half of her life. Mm -hmm. We had a great life together, loads of loveliness like the best times of my life were, were with are with Danielle she grew up with me and she's experienced a lot of things that maybe some kids shouldn't have experiences but at least she knows the real world yeah. and I'll never ever harm her and I'll never allow anyone to harm her or anyone yeah. but I definitely opened my daughter's eyes up to this world mm -hmm. this world we live in and I didn't really keep things from her because I didn't want her to find out later the world weren't as nice as what it betrays itself yeah. I showed Danielle the real life and I always loved my beautiful Danielle always forever me and Danielle have had some amazing times. She lived in Jaywick. She went through it all with me. She seen me rise up. And she seen me become who I am today. So I love Danielle with all my heart. And when I had Danielle, I looked at life from a different set of eyes. I thought, wow, it's not just about me now anymore. I had to do well for my daughter. So I basically worked harder and harder and harder to like own my own house. In them days, you could buy a house for £3,000 in Jaywick. Wow. So I just wanted to get on the property ladder to build a solid home for me and my daughter. Mm. And even though all the things we were going through, that was what it was all about. And security was number one for me because my mum died when I was 14. My sister, Michelle, she died when I was 18 months old in 1974. She was one of the first children in Britain to have a hole in her heart, the operation done on her. She oh. died recovering from it, 18 months old. So I grew up my whole life with my sister, Michelle, rest in peace, died at 18 months old. My mum, aged 35, she, when she died, she died when I was 14. I grew up with the, the most two important women in my life I grew up without. Yeah. So when I had Danielle at 23, 24, I was like, yes, mm -hmm. I've got a woman back in my life, someone that loves me. Yeah. And I felt so great. Yeah. And I, I worked even harder then. I knew my dreams were coming true. And when Danielle came into my life, I knew that my path had begun. Even though it's 21 years ago, I remember it like it was today. Yeah. I'll always love my Danielle. She is the difference between hell, heaven and hell. Danielle, my beautiful girl, love her so much. So anyway, Danielle lived with me. A few, whenever she weren't at school, she lived with me. And then she lived with her mum the other time. And I used to work as a builder in between as much as I can. But then when my daughter got to about two or three and I was 25, 26, I was friends with a lot, a lot of people. Like I had, a, I had a little group of friends around me of around 15 to 20 people. Mm -hmm. And we were getting bored on Friday nights. Yeah. We were just hanging around. We got out the clubs, but we didn't have the money to keep drinking. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to keep drinking every night. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We weren't into that. We were into going on adventures and going places. Mm -hmm. So I had this. I, I I remember this album by Pink Floyd called "Wish You Were Here." Mm -hmm. And if you open up the booklet, there's a row of trees right. with a flag flying. Mm -hmm. I imagined that flag was a group of friends dancing around the fire. Because my dad's a biker, when I was little, he did that quite often. The bikes would all pull up in the forest, yeah. they'd have a little party. Nice. I wanted to do that for my generation. Yeah. So I created this thing in 1997 right. called Fetford. Right. I used to drive to Fetford Forest with 20 of my friends, mm -hmm. and we used to build a fire in between the rows of trees. Yeah. I used to take my DJ equipment, nice. and we used to party for two days and two nights. Wow. Climb the trees, yeah. become one with nature. Yeah. And I did that from 1997 until 2001. Wow. And this fairy tale just turned into a nightmare. Do you want to hear it now or on the next interview? We will carry that on. We'll, we'll stick a pin in it for now. Are you sure you don't want it now? Oh, I think we'll, I think we'll, we'll keep a, an East Enders style. I think you should hold him for that. Yeah, an East Because something happened in 2001 that stopped the Fetford dream. 
Mm. And maybe your listeners are going to really know how I got over this. Everyone is on tenterhooks, quite literally. I can feel it now. So we're going to um, go on from, um, from Bob Marley and Redemption Song to your next request off of your, your top list today. Um, so you mentioned Pink Floyd. Uh, they are a big, in, a big in, in, inspiration and influence to, to you. Um, Do you want to know why? And we would like to know why, Danny. I'm so excited I couldn't restrain myself. My mum, when she was alive, when I was like four or five, we lived in Cambridge Road, number 29. Right. My mum painted the album cover, Dark Side of the Moon. She painted it on, the, on our front room wall, which was about 20 foot long. Whenever I come down the stairs, yeah. I saw a Dark Side of the Moon. When my mum died at 14, I told my dad, Dad, when I was little, there was like a triangle on the wall with a rainbow coming out of it. Can you tell me what that was about, Dad? My dad said, Danny, your mum painted Dark Side of the Moon on our front room wall because she loved that so much. So I basically started listening to Pink Floyd at the age of 15 or 16 to kind of fill the gap of missing my mum. Yeah. And when I listened to the album time after time, I realised the word shine on was to do with Pink Floyd. So whenever I meet someone now, mm. I say shine on. Yeah. And whenever I say goodbye to someone, I say shine on. Yeah. So people say to me, why do you say shine on? Mm. I just told you why I say shine on, Chris. Yeah. And that is why I love Pink Floyd. And that is why I've chosen this song. Because I do believe that we are all just bricks in the wall. But I do believe we can make a difference by shining on. Perfect. Pink Floyd, another brick in the wall. On switch, don't Thanks, Danny.